Well, hello there. My name is Sometimes Heather and I play Let's Go Sunlight. Today, I wanted to take you back to the roses bound together with ice and fire. A while back, Inessa chose to follow her sisters to receive the dark gift. I thought Leanna would miss her until the end of her days, freezing alone in their snow globe hole. As it turns out, Leanna is stronger of the two. Instead of locking herself away in icy sorrow, she knelt before Mother LeMay to follow her wife in the darkness. I was quite iffy about how a warden's powers would go together with the curse of vampirism, but Leanna turned out surprisingly fun to play with. I took a bit of a different approach to her build and used a combination of abilities I haven't tried before. It's been a while since I was this excited about the build. I've taken Liana around a public dungeon to show you what it's like to play with her, and so that you'll get a realistic view of her damage numbers. Let's watch for a bit before looking into her abilities. I've armed Liana with a Resto and Destro Star. My backup weapon is rarely used. Its abilities are used before combat, not during it. If you'd prefer, feel free to use another Destro Staff here. First, on said backup weapon, I have Degeneration. This Major Guild ability deals a set amount of magic damage over 24 seconds. It also grants Liana Major Brutality and Sorcery, which boost weapon and spell damage. This is my only Major's Guild ability, but I've leveled up the Major's Guild skill line because of a delicious passive. Reaching rank 9 unlocks Might of the Guild passive. When casting a Major's Guild ability, you'll get Empower for a short while. This increases heavy attack damage against monsters. The time is short, but in combat, every second counts. Next, we have Gripping Shards. This brings forth icicles to skewer enemies. All those caught in the area of effect take frost damage for 12 seconds at a time and are slowed down due to the cold. I really like this ability. It's flashy and fun and also quite effective. Next up, Screaming Cliff Racer. As the name suggests, this summons a Cliff Racer to deal magic damage upon enemies. Casting this from afar causes enemies to be sent off balance. After the Cliff Racer has done damage, your weapon and spell damage are increased for 10 seconds. Damaging off balance enemies will quadruple the amount. This ability was altered with update 35 and I personally feel it's now a bit better than before. Next, I have the mandatory healing ability. I've chosen Polar Wind mainly to further immersion. It would feel a bit strange to use a Resto Staff healing ability instead of an icy one with Liana. Polar Wind wraps Liana and an ally in an icy healing breeze for 10 seconds at a time. Due to reasons I'll share a bit later, I try to use this sparingly. Last, on this staff we have Acceleration from the Citrix skill line. This grants major expedition for 12 seconds, which increases your movement speed. This also gives minor force for an entire minute. As minor force increases critical damage, it suits Liana perfectly. For our ultimate, I have chosen the Swarming Sire. What else could I do with a stage 4 immersion vampire? Let's go backwards with Liana's main weapon, which is an Ice Staff. First, I have Frost Pulsar. This releases a surge of frost to all enemies around. It affects enemies with minor mangle and allies with minor protection. The former reduces the health of enemies while the latter reduces damage taken. This is a convenient skill that changes depending on weapon type. Ice. Flame and Lightning Staffs all have a bit different effects. Next, Sated Fury. 
This increases weapon and spell damage at an increasing rate. This is a toggleable ability that costs health to cost. While on, Sated Fury drains your health, drawing you closer and closer to the brink of death. Toggling the ability off restores a part of the life force you lost while it was on. This is a delightful ability that requires a bit of concentration to use. Then we have Frost Reach. This deals both instant and overtime damage. The first blast deals a set amount of frost damage, while a second wave deals a larger amount of damage during the next 20 seconds. Enemies hit also get chilled. This one can be altered for your favorite spam ball. Next, we have Unstable Wall of Elements. I held onto this mainly due to the icy effects. Unstable Wall of Frost works in many, many ways. First, it deals a set amount of frost damage every second for 10 seconds. It also grants an ice shield for you and your allies for 6 seconds. As the wall of frost explodes, it grants a weaker frost shield for another 6 seconds. The wall of elements was nerfed during update 35, I still like it. Last on this staff is the ability Liana's build rests upon, Arterial Burst. It's the first vampire ability a fletchling vamp unlocks, and, to be quite honest, it doesn't look like much. But there is a hidden depth to it. Arterial Burst deals a set amount of damage to a single enemy. The amount of damage dealt grows as your health drops. Below 50% health, Arterial Burst will always be a critical strike. To make the most of this, Leanna's health should remain below 50% at all times. It's a little bit challenging to achieve, but therein lies the enjoyment. Leanna's abilities mostly come from Winter's Embrace, Destruction Staff and Vampire Skill lines. I would recommend purchasing all the passives in these lines, along with passives from Light Armor, Breton and Major Skill Skill lines. I've shown Leanna on this channel before. I haven't changed much about her gear. What I had earlier should still work okay for this build. First, I have Winterborn covering various armor and jewelry slots. This set drops from Maelstrom Arena. It adds to maximum magicka and magicka recovery, along with weapon and spell damage. With five pieces equipped, a fun perk is unlocked. When you deal frost damage, an icy pillar appears to deal frost damage to all enemies within a 3 meter radius. They'll also be slowed down. The pillar can appear every 6 seconds and scales of weapon and spell damage. For Liana's second set, I stuck with Frostbite. This is an overland set that drops from Blackwood. It adds to weapon and spell damage and critical chance. With 5 pieces equipped, it increases the damage done by frost abilities and to enemies that are chilled or affected by minor brittle. I have this set covering both weapon slots and 3 armor or jewelry slots. It doesn't really matter where you put these, just make certain both weapons come from the same set. Liana's monster set drops from Dire Frost Keep. Shoulders can be purchased from Undaunted Vendors. Ice Heart adds to critical chance. With both pieces equipped, dealing critical damage brings forth an icy shield that both absorbs and deals damage. This is a great way to keep Liana from dying a bit too easily, and as the shield does frost damage, I do believe it feeds the Winter Pawn set. Let's take a look at champion points real quick. I'm not very good with this, so please don't trust me blindly. In Warfare, my active stars are Fighting Finesse, Deadly Aim, Thaumaturge and Untamed Aggression. In Fitness, I've gone with Siphoning Spells, Rejuvenation, Fortified and Boundless Vitality. In Crafts, I have Master Gatherer, Treasure Hunter, Homemaker and Plentiful Harvest. As the Craft constellation serves to make your game more enjoyable, do choose the stars that bring joy to you. Though I had my doubts, Liana's build turned out really nice. She is a challenge to play with, but somehow exhilarating. 
I like the combination of Ice Ward and Vampire abilities, and the way she lingers on the border of life and death. In a way, she is the most enjoyable vampire build I've made so far, even though she isn't the easiest to play with. I do hope you like her as much as I do. Next time, I thought I might take a look at a strange ring I recently dug up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Done.